Community Church. We're so excited to be getting together and watching at the same time. Kind of like a watch party. Yeah, so why don't you all come over to our place and watch? Uh, no. Oh, right. We didn't do the vacuum. No COVID. Right. The worship team is ready to go. We have an exciting kids' time with Madeline today and then a great message followed by Pastor Jan. Come on, let's go watch.
morning. Welcome. It's great to be with you today. Wherever you are worshiping from, we welcome you. We are excited to be part of your worship experience. We are praying for you. We've missed you. And we hope that uh, all things are going well in your life. And we are glad that we are here to worship together. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you for this day. I thank you that we can come together and we can worship. Father, we just ask right now that wherever we are, wherever we are seated, wherever and whatever time we are watching this, that you are with us and that you are constant in our life and that you are the center. Father, we thank you for each member of RHCC and we ask a special blessing on them today. Amen. Good morning, all children and youth. Welcome back. We're so excited to be doing live services with you again so that wherever you are, we're all meeting at once. And we are so excited with some youth events and children events launching this past week. Um, and this week, we're so excited to see all of you again, to connect with you. And every week here on Sunday morning, we're so excited to share a short children's time with you. So for this back to the same time, back to live week, we're going to go back to the beginning. This week, I saw the verse on our own flyers that said, do not grow weary in doing good. And that sent me back to the very beginning of our whole creation story in our Bible to our start with a good, good God. We're going to sing songs, maybe not this week, but some week that show how good, good, good our God is. Some songs that say that we have a good, good father. Some songs that repeat over and over and over again, you are good, good, so good, or you are good, good, oh good. We have a good, good God. And in the very beginning of our story, our creation story in the Bible, we see another thing that is good. God creates the heavens and the earth, and what does he say? People who are here, what does he say they are? Good. good. He says they're good. He creates the sun, the moon, the stars, and what does he say they are? Good. He creates the earth, the plants, he creates even the vegetables, and he said they are? Good. Good. He creates the fish in the sea and the animals that move on the ground and in the sky. And what does he say? They are good. They are good because they are made by a good creator. And they show how amazing this creator is, how creative he is, and how good he is. They reflect the nature of our good, good, good God. And then he decided, hey, you know what? I want to be in a relationship. And you know what? I'm going to create this next creation in my own image. So when other people see them, they will see who I am. They will see the image of who I am, and they will say, wow, that, that is a good God. And so he created people, and he said they were very, very good. good. They were very, very good, because they were reflecting the image of who God was. Now, even though God had a good, good, good plan, and he was a good, good, good God, and he created a good, good, good creation that showed how amazing he was, humans had another plan, and they thought, you know what, we want to decide what's good and what's not good. And what we decided was good did not necessarily reflect the nature of God. It didn't show the loving, amazing, glory-worthy God that we have. It showed a less than good. And so you'll probably see that in the world around you. There's some good, and then there's some not-so-good things that came from us deciding what we thought was good, reflecting ourselves rather than reflecting our God. Now we have this verse that says, Do not grow weary of doing good. Galatians 6, 9. Do not grow weary of doing good. Do not go, grow weary of reflecting, showing who our amazing God is and who he created us to be. So I'm going to use a little demonstration that I found helpful, and I'm going to use some of my niece's play kit. Thanks, Lottie. And I'm going to show what God meant when he said, do not grow weary of doing good. Because maybe sometimes you think, oh my goodness, I try to do good, and I try to do good, and then I'm so tired of doing good, and then I do bad. If anyone's like me, that's probably how the story goes, right? I'm going to do good, do good, do good, do good. 
and my own strength, I, I get tired of doing good, and I'm like, okay, no, I'm not, I'm gonna, not going to choose the good. I'm going to choose the easy. But God never intended us for us to be the good thing. He intended for us to show how good God was. He intended for us not to show how good Madeline is because that ends up being pretty not so good. He intended for us to show how good is our God. Let's reflect who God is. Now we are going to use, let's use the yellow. And we are going to say when God created the earth, he said, let there be light, right? And if we go a little metaphorical, God was like this amazing light on the earth. He had this plan that was to say, hey, I want this whole earth to show my nature, show this good, show this loving, 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 loving God. And it was like the bright sun on the brightest day. Now, sin entered our earth, and it was like we went into nighttime. We had darkness. Darkness entered the earth, right? And it was like we had nighttime. Now, God had his people, though. Let's have the earth. So this is going to be the sun. So it's like God. This is going to be the earth, nice and green, right? And this is like God's people, us. And this sun, earth, and God's people are like the moon. Now, who here knows how the moon gets its light? Is it light itself? Is it like a flashlight? No. No, no it's not like a flashlight. It actually has no light. If you take the sun out of the equation, the moon's basically just dark on its own. But how does the moon get its light? It reflects the light of the sun. The sun is the source of the light, and in the nighttime, the moon lights up the sky because it's reflecting the light of the sun. Thank you, science teachers, for being able to teach us that. If you haven't learned that yet, ask your teachers how the moon gets its light. You'll find out the moon gets its light from the sun. So in our night that we have because of sin, we've got the sun that's gone Say the sun's gone down because it's nighttime, but we've got the sun that's sharing its light with the moon, reflecting its light from the moon onto the earth. Now, I don't know about you, but there's some nights when I do not see a full moon. There are some nights when instead of making itself available to all of the light of the sun, the moon is like, you know what, actually, I'm going to let the earth, can you see that there? I'm going to get, let the earth get in between me and God. I'm going to let what people think get between what actually God thinks. And what happens? What happens? Well, you know what? The moon is dark. None of the moon is visible. Now, what happens if I say, okay, you know what, God? I'm going to experience a little bit of your goodness, and I'm going to share a little bit of that goodness. We get what we see as a little sliver of the moon. And it's a little light. You can a little bit see that the sun is reflecting off of it, but it's not really bright. What about if we say, you know what? We are more important than the sun, and we're going to show how great we are like this. Well, you might not have seen that in a while, but this is what we call an eclipse. And the sky is not actually that bright because the moon is blocking all the light of the sun. If we say, hey, world, see how amazing we are rather than how amazing God is, the sky is not actually that bright. Now, however, if we give all of ourselves to God, if we say, God, you know what? I want to experience all of who you are, the love and the light that you are. And I say, you know what? I'm going to make myself fully available to you. And not only am I going to experience that light, I want to share that light. If we say, I'm going to make myself fully available to God, it's like when we have a full moon. It might not be full daytime brightness. It might not be what we're waiting for, which is when Jesus Christ comes again and he makes his light and his love fill the whole, whole earth. But when we see a full moon in the sky, you think, wow, it's almost as bright as day. And that is what we, as followers of God, are called to do. We're called to say, hey, God, I want to give my whole life to you. Not just a sliver, so we've got a little bit of the moon showing and it's still dark. No, we want to give our whole life to you. And that means we want all of your love that we experience to reflect back on the world. And you know what? 
in kind of this time when the world is not the brightest of places, I think that's what we're called to as Christians, to say, hey, Lord, I'm going to give you my life, and I'm going to reflect all of that light and love on the world around me. So do not grow weary of doing good. It's not about us just trying, 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 trying hard, 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 working so hard and getting so tired doing good. It's us experiencing the goodness of God, saying, hey, we have a great, great, great God. I want to experience how good he is, and I want to fulfill my purpose in showing the world how great our God is. And then it will be almost as bright as day in the world around you. So thank you guys so much. I just pray that your week is filled with experiencing God's love and showing God's love to those around you. So we just, uh, yeah, thanks for joining us today. Join us for our Fruit of the Spirit goodness at the link we sent out and for our whole uh, Kids Quest. And we can't wait to see you next week. See you. قسمتی از کلام خدا را از اعمال رسولان باب دو میخونم آیات 42 تا 47. و در تعلیم رسولان و مشارکت ایشان و شکستن نانها و دعاها مواظب می نمودن. همه خلق ترسیدند و معجزات و علائم بسیار از دست رسولان صادر می گشت و همه ایمانداران با هم می زیستن و در همه چیز شریک می بودن. و املاک و اموال خود را فروخته آنها را به هر کس به قدر احتیاجش تقسیم می کردن و هر روزه در هیکل به یک دست به یک دل پیوسته می بودن و در خانه ها نان ها را پاره می کردن و خوراک را به خوشی و ساده دلی می خوردن و خدا را حمد می گفتن و نزد تمامی خلق عزیز می گردیدن و خداوند هر روز ناجیان را بر کلیسا می افزود I will sing for joy, but I choose to praise. I count on one thing. The same God that never fails will not fail me now. You won't fail me now in the waiting. The same God who's never late. He's working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Yes, I will sing for joy when my heart is heavy. Oh.
سلام خدمت همه شما عزیزان خداوند خوشحالم که میتونیم بار دیگه هم دیگر رو ببینیم و با هم باشیم کلام خداوند میگه که اینک چه خوش و دلپسند است که برادران به یک دلی با هم ساکن باشن و خدا رو شکر میکنیم که ما میتونیم به یک دلی در نام عیسی مسیح با هم باشیم چند لحظه دعا کنیم خداوند عزیز پدر آسمانی تو رو شکر میکنم به خاطر فیض عظیمت محبتت محافظتت و همه روزهایی که سپری شد و تو در سلامتی به ما بخشیده خداوند میخوام خداوند را امروز و همه روزهای آتی زندگی ما ایمان ما فرزندان ما خداوند را همه چیز در دستان تو باشه ای پدر و فیض تو روز به روز بیشتر و بیشتر در زندگی ما و تمام راه های ما جاری باشه این خداوند خداوند را بگذار شاهدان فرزندان و امانتداران خوبی برای تو باشیم در این روزهایی که ای خداوند دنیا بیش از پیش به تو نیاز داره ای خداوند برکت بده به نام عیسی مسیح خداوند آمین
And now Pastor Jan is going to come and he's going to share the message with us this morning as we're all watching together. Jan, come and share with us. Good morning, church. It's so good to be here with you and share the word. We're going to be looking at Acts 2, verses 42 to 47, and we're going to read that a bit. But I want to ask you a question. What can we offer? In these current times, during a global pandemic, how can we still offer a church as a place to belong? I know it must seem difficult to you to look at during this time, but we still need to be the church It's harder to do evangelism or think of church growth, but we as a church have many people as part of our community that need us and need to know that we are still there for them and that we care about them. In a world that is becoming increasingly individualistic, we offer a place to belong, authentic faith community where anyone is welcomed and encouraged to participate regardless of age, gender, ethnicity, or background. Authentic communities thrive on qualities such as hospitality, trust, respect, grace, acceptance, unity, and humility. We also believe that God has all given us all gifts and talents to be used for the building up of his kingdom and church. And so we expect people who profess to follow Jesus to not only belong, but also to contribute as they are able in the life, work, worship, and witness of the faith community. We offer a place to belong. Every week, this sweet little old lady waited in line at the post office to buy two stamps. One day, as she got to the counter, the post, postal worker said to her, you know, you don't have to wait in line to buy stamps. You can get them from the machine over there in books of 20. The little old lady looked at her and responded, Yes, but the machine doesn't ask me how I'm doing and if I'm looking after myself. People need and often long to be connected. Studies show that an increasing number of people are experiencing feelings of intense loneliness. Along with a global pandemic that is not helping that situation, there is an epidemic going on as well. Loneliness. Loneliness cuts across all ages, socioeconomic groups, affecting people who live alone, but also those who don't. Millionaires, celebrities, senior citizens, teens. No one's immune. Canadians at an unprecedented level, it says, we are experiencing an epidemic of loneliness and isolation. And a pandemic is only increasing that level. During this year, everywhere you look, there are signs that people are hungering for fellowship, community, and a sense of family. And what a better place should there be than to find that in their local church? So what does it mean to offer a place to belong? A place to belong is welcoming. The first century church described in Acts 2, 40 to 47, is a picture of a place to belong. Acts 2, 42 to 47, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of their bread and prayer. Everyone was filled with awe at many wonders and signs performed by the apostles, and the Lord added to their numbers daily who were being saved. There was teaching There was fellowship, there was food, prayer, sharing of resources, singleness of mind, worship, signs and wonders, newcomers, and sounds of reputation. They seem to have it all, a place to belong. The passage ends by saying, The Lord added to their numbers daily those who were being saved. Clearly, The early church was a place that people were drawn to and felt welcomed. No wonder church grew. Looking at the example in Scripture, the church was not created to be an exclusive club for those that made the cut. The church was meant for all people. This means we welcome all people in, offering grace and acceptance to everyone. 
It means we welcome people regardless of age, gender, ethnicity, and background. It means you don't have to believe to belong. Did you hear me? You don't have to believe to belong. Jesus never showed je- prejudice with who he ministered to or welcomed into his circle. Before COVID hit, what happened when somebody new walked into our church? Were they welcomed? Did people make connections with them or were intentionally in building a relationship with them? Is this just a Sunday or do we welcome them into our weekday lives as well? What if they looked different, acted different, smelled different, thought differently? Would they be judged or welcomed? How often do you welcome people into your home? Encourage them to join your family group or your small group or text them or call them during the week. When Paul wrote his letter that are included in the New Testament, he addressed people as brothers and sisters. He included foreigners, strangers, and Gentiles. We're not meant to be exclusive, but inviting, welcoming, and in turn, growing. And the author of Hebrews similarly calls for a warm and open fellowship. Keep on loving one another as brothers and sisters. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. For by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing it. Continue to remember those in prison as if you were together in prison and those who are mistreated as if you yourselves were suffering. We need to remember to continue creating a place where all people feel safe, comfortable, accepted, and welcomed. A place to belong is a welcoming place. A place to belong is about being in community. In Genesis, God created Adam And then said, it's not good for man to be alone. And in turn creates Eve. We are not meant to be alone. Christ created us to be in community. True community is about supporting those around us. Sharing together and knowing that we belong. The Bible often refers to this form of community as a fellowship. The term Luke uses for fellowship in Acts is a much broader term than our English word. Essentially, fellowship means joint participation or sharing something in common. When we are in fellowship or in joint participation, we know we have each other's backs. Being in community means that we are all in this together. A place to belong provides strength. Ecclesiastes puts it this way, two people are better than one because they get more done by working together. There's more power in teamwork. We help carry the load and get more done together. We're in fellowship, joint participation. A place to belong provides support. Two are better off than one because if one of them falls down, the other can help him up. But if somebody is alone and falls, it's just too bad because there's no one to help him. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 10. One of the major benefits of being in community means that we have a support system to call on. We are not made to live alone. We need others around us to support and encourage. Like the example of the early church, we need to be sharing together Offering practical support, praying for each other, learning together, opening our homes to each other, and meeting together when we're allowed. Living in this kind of community also spurs us on. In Hebrews it says, And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another, and all the more you see the day approaching. Part of joining together and being in community means we have others around us to encourage us, push us forward, and journey with us. 
A place to belong keeps people on fire. When we choose to disconnect and cut ourselves off from a church community, our spiritual lives suffer. One of the first symptoms of spiritual decline is usually inconsistent attendance at worship services and other gatherings of believers. Whenever we become careless about fellowship, everything else begins to slide. In a world that is becoming more and more, as I said, individualistic and self-focused, we need to be creating authentic communities that offer something more than this. Social media and technology have an incredible benefit for us in how we communicate and interact with each other. But offering a place to belong goes much more further than that. We need to remember that we are not created to be alone, but in community. And community goes beyond a Sunday service. A place to belong encourages contribution. To Paul, being a member of the church meant being a vital organ of a living body, an indispensable, interconnected part of the body of Christ. Romans 12, 45 says in the message, In this way, we are like the various parts of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us find our meaning and function as part of his body. But as a chopped off finger or a cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much, would we? As a place to belong is also a place through which to contribute to life, work, worship, witness, and the faith community. Rick Warren at Saddleback Church has said, In some churches, membership is often reduced to simply adding a name to your role with no requirement or expectation. But that is not RHCC. The strength of the church lies in the mobilized congregation. Employed staff and corporate social service provision can never replace the role of an individual disciple of Jesus engaged in witness and service in their local community. Each person, each of us, has something different to offer. We are each blessed with different gifts and talents to be used to build his kingdom and his church. Like the analogy of the body with many parts, we each need to offer our gifts, talents, personalities, and knowledge in order to be fully functioning body of people. Sometimes it's easy to look at upfront roles and think, that's not for me. I can't preach or I can't play guitar. Sometimes it's easy to feel like there's no place for you to serve. What skills can I offer? Someone else is going to be better at that. Or sometimes it's easy to think, I can't serve. I've got kids or I'm on shift work or I'm too old for that. The beautiful thing is that God has created us to be a body, meaning we need every person and every gift to be a healthy community. There are so many ways to serve, and often we don't see those behind-the-scenes roles as a vital part of the body of Christ. We each have different abilities. We are all in different stages of our life, and we all have different schedules and pressures. But there are ways for everyone to serve in his kingdom. There are so many ways to serve, and we are all contributing, and we all can contribute to that. We feel we are a part of a wider team when we contribute to the body of Christ. We feel connected to those around us. We feel valued, needed, and important. When we contribute, we have invested interest. We care more and we feel like we have ownership. Healthy communities encourage active participation because they know it benefits individuals and a wider collective. Imagine if the early church had only prayed but never given of their possessions. Imagine if they had only spent time together but never preached or taught. Imagine if some of the church 
had everything in common, and others just went along for the ride. Imagine if they had talked about starting this new Christ-centered community, but never actually met together or did anything. Would it have had the impact it did? Would people have stuck around? Would the church still exist today? God asks us to play the part and serve. God doesn't call us to be passive followers, but active in our discipleship and service. 1 Peter 2, 5 says, You also, a living stone, are being built on a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer a spiritual sacrifice acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. This means we all have a part to play. We don't just leave it to one or two people in the right role to do the work. We are all priesthood of all believers. There's no spectators. We all have the right and meaning to serve the kingdom. The strength of the community is the strength of its people. A place to belong offers opportunities for people to serve, outwork their giftings, and contribute to the life of the community. So what should we do? There are many ways in which we can contribute to belonging to the community. Join a family group or a small group. Be in one. Social events. Support them. Passions and skills. Use and enhance them. Hospitality or practical care offer to help. Newcomers shifting into our communities, befriend them. Neighborhoods are not necessarily socially well. Reach out to them. The church is unique in that it is open to everyone from birth to departure from this life and is the only organization in town structured this way. We need to take care to keep it that way. We are not exclusive. The health of the church is the sum of the commitment and support and personal spiritual health of its members. A healthy congregation is like a loving family. Talented people in the community are looking for an opportunity to express their talents. Let's make room for them. Everyone needs a place to belong. Where people smile when they arrive and say, it's good to see you. Or when they leave, see you soon. Maybe their family is far away. Maybe they're feeling alone. Or maybe they just could use a friend or two. God doesn't just call us to believe. He calls us to belong. The the entire Bible is a story of God building a family that will support, strengthen, and stir one another up to love and good works for all eternity. And he created us to be part of it. As we reflect together, take time to consider your role in our community. Are you playing your part? What does the Spirit of God ask of you? Should you be making an offer of service? Do you have in mind a lonely person who could use a place to belong? Let's create a place where people belong, where they feel welcomed, supported, and can contribute to the life of the community. Let's pray together. God, I want to thank you that uh, you open our eyes to new things every time we look into your word. I thank you that you challenge us, that sometimes as a church we fall short, and that there are people out in this world that are lonely, that are needing a community around them, that are needing to know who you are. But God, more than that, there might be people in our church that are feeling lonely, that don't feel like they have anyone supporting them or being with you. God, just open their hearts to reach out. But most importantly, God, put it on our hearts through your Holy Spirit to reach out to them in their need. God, fill us with your love. Fill us with your grace and your compassion for all people. Not just the people that we want to get to know, but for all people. No matter who they are. 
God, we love you so much as a church, and we want to serve you as a church. So God, help us to do that. Show us our ways. Guide us and direct us in all we do. And help us to see how we can be a church in this time. How we can continue to do your mission, the mission that your son Jesus Christ started. So that more people can come to know you in our community. We thank you again for your son Jesus Christ and what he has given to us and the sacrifice he made on the cross. Jesus, we love you and we care about people because you cared about people. Continue to fill us with your spirit. I've searched the world But it couldn't fill me Man's empty praise and treasures that fade are never enough. Then you came along and you put me back together. And every desire is now satisfied here in your love. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than